Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with buffalo chicken dynamite rice. That's right, if everything had gone according to plan, this chicken wing inspired twist on dynamite rice would have been a delicious tribute to the fact the Buffalo Bills were going to the Super Bowl, but they lost. So now it's just a sad reminder that they're not. But hey, we still have to eat. And this, my friends, win or lose, is definitely something you want to eat. So with that, let's go ahead and get started by adding six boneless, skinless chicken thighs to whatever baking dish we're going to make this in. And we want to try to use something where the chicken will fit in one layer. And then what we'll do is drizzle a couple tablespoons of melted butter over the chicken. And then we'll take our tongs and give this a mix until everything's evenly coated. And yes, you could use olive oil or pretty much any fat you want. But as you may know, buffalo chicken wing sauce is basically just two ingredients, which are Louisiana hot sauce and butter. Although the original was margarine, but we don't talk about that. But no matter what you use, once the chicken's coated, we will generously season the top with salt, at which point we're going to pop this into a 400 degree oven for about 20 minutes or so, or until the chicken's just barely cooked through. And while we're waiting for that, so as not to waste time, let's go ahead and mix up our spicy mayonnaise, which of course starts with mayo, to which we will add a generous amount of Louisiana style hot sauce. Okay, Frank's would be the choice in Buffalo, but whatever your favorite hot sauce is will do the job. And then speaking of hot, I'm also going to toss in a nice spoon of cayenne, plus a little bit of paprika, followed by a little touch of garlic powder. And we'll also do a little bit of freshly ground black pepper. And then we'll finish up with a tablespoon of white distilled vinegar. Just to add a little bit of extra sharpness to what is a fairly rich sauce. And that's it. As soon as we whisk that all together, we can go ahead and pop that in the fridge and keep it cold until we need it. Okay, so our dynamite rice sauce is done. And assuming it's been about 20 to 25 minutes, we'll go ahead and pull our chicken out of the oven. And if you want to test it with a thermometer, go ahead. But if the meat is firm to the touch, which this was, that almost always means it's cooked long enough. And if it is, we'll go ahead and transfer that to a plate or bowl. And we can pop that in the fridge while we move on to make our rice which because of all those accumulated juices you can see in the dish, is going to be extra buttery and chickeny. So once we've removed the chicken and it's in the fridge, we will very, very carefully pour that into a measuring cup. And as you can see, I got about a third of a cup. And then what we'll do is head to the stove, where I have one cup of long grain rice in a saucepan. And what we'll do is fill the rest of that measuring cup up to the top with cold, fresh water. And we'll dump that in, plus another additional just over half a cup of water. Right, the direction said to use one and three quarters cup of water for every cup of rice, but I generally find that a little too much, so I went with something between a half and two thirds cup. And then what we'll do is give this a little swirl, and we'll set our heat to high, and we will wait for this to come up to a boil. But we're not going to walk away, because the fatal flaw with most people's rice techniques is that they don't notice the rice has started to boil, and by the time they realize it, it's already boiled for a few minutes. And if you do that, all your timing is going to be off and you're going to get mushy rice. So we will watch very carefully. And just as soon as the mixture comes to a boil like this, we will give it another swirl. And then we will quickly cover it. And we'll reduce our heat to somewhere between low and medium low. And we will cook this covered for exactly 15 minutes. And then once our timer rings, we will turn off the heat. And we will set our timer for 10 minutes. But do not uncover or stir the rice yet. Just leave it alone and let it sit covered. And that's it. When the 10 minutes is up, we can take a fork and fluff which should be absolutely perfect rice. All right, beautifully cooked tender grains, which are not sticking and clumping all together. And once we've given our rice an initial fluffing, we can go ahead and transfer that into our baking dish. And we can distribute that into a nice even layer, which I'm going to do very carefully with the tip of the spoon. Because it's okay to be poking, but it is not okay to be packing. Okay, we don't want to create a dense, compact layer, so please be a little bit gentle. And then once that's set, it is now ready to top with our chicken, among other things. Speaking of which, if there are any accumulated juices from that bowl or plate of your cooked chicken, you should definitely drizzle those over the top of your rice now. I mean, what else are you going to do with those? Throw them away? I think not. And that's it. We'll simply set that aside while we cut up our now probably cooled chicken. And for me, I'm going to shoot for about half-inch pieces, which is super easy to do if you cut half-inch strips and then turn those strips and cut them across every half-inch. 
So that's my method, which I hope is the same as your method. And no, they don't have to all be perfectly exact, right? Just get them close. That's all we ever ask. And then once we have all our chicken cut up, we will toss that into our spicy mayonnaise and we'll take our spatula and give that a good mix. And this would be the perfect time to tell you, you can use this dynamite rice technique for pretty much any protein or vegetable or whatever else people are eating these days. But anyway, once whatever you're mixing is mixed, it is ready to transfer over the rice. But before I do, because I'm calling this buffalo chicken, I'm actually going to scatter a small dice of celery over the top. And besides the little bit of texture it adds, as anyone that knows how to cook will tell you, adding a bitter element when you compose a dish is almost always a great idea. But if you don't want to, don't add it. I mean, you are after all the Josh Allen of not Fallon. But I definitely think adding it increases your chances of success. So I went ahead and scattered over some celery before transferring that chicken mixture over the top. And then we'll use our spatula, once again, mostly just using the tip to distribute that nice and evenly without pushing and packing things down too hard. And then what we'll do once our chicken's been transferred on and any excess sauce has been drizzled over the top, we will finish this up with a couple optional ingredients. The first of which would be some crumbled blue cheese, which as you can see, I'm crumbling for myself. Since I'm not crazy, and I do not buy pre-crumbled or pre-grated cheese. And if you do, I'm not mad, but I am a little disappointed. Oh, and pro tip, to make this a lot easier, just pop the cheese into the freezer before you do this, and it will firm up and be a lot easier to crumble apart. And just like the celery, if you're not a fan, you don't have to put it. Or if you're in a mixed crowd and some people like it and some people don't, you could serve this in the celery on the side and people can put on as much as they want. But anyway, I think it's much better to bake it right on and yes, a little bit goes a long way, so don't overdo it. And that's it. We will finish this up by shaking a little cayenne over the top. And that's it. This is now ready to transfer into the center of a 450 degree oven for about 15 to 20 minutes or until everything's heated through and the top starts to brown. And for a little extra browning, if you want to broil the top for like a minute on high, I think that's a good idea. And that's exactly what I did. At which point it looked like this. Okay, so to recap, 450 for about 15 to 20 minutes. And then if you want a minute or two under the broiler, which you really don't have to do, but it does look better. Speaking of which, we could serve this as is, but I'm gonna go ahead and do a racing stripe with some extra diced celery, followed by some more crumbled blue cheese. And after I applied the cheese, I decided to do a little more hot sauce over the top. And then if you're lucky, when you buy your celery stock, on top or inside, it may have come with some leaves, which have this beautiful kind of light green chartreuse color. And I think that is the absolute perfect way to finish this off. Oh yeah, check it out. It almost looks like we know what we're doing. And that's it, our buffalo chicken dynamite rice is ready to enjoy. And as good as I thought that looked, I was absolutely blown away by how great this tasted. All right, well, I've done dynamite rice before using seafood, which is usually how it's done, with a Japanese flavor profile, since it is, after all, based on a dynamite sushi roll. But this version was an experiment, and I could not have been happier with how it came out. Okay, if you're a fan of the buffalo chicken wing, especially when enjoyed with celery and blue cheese, I believe you will very much enjoy this. And while it's the butter or margarine in the sauce that brings richness to buffalo chicken wings, here we accomplished that with that spicy mayo, and it really, really did work out well. Especially since we have that beautiful chickeny rice to soak up everything underneath. And while there really isn't anything quite like gnawing the meat off an actual saucy, spicy chicken wing, there's also nothing quite like finding a bone between your couch cushions three weeks after the big party. So while definitely not the same experience, this buffalo-style chicken format has some advantages. But anyway, that's it what we're calling buffalo chicken dynamite rice. And whether you make this frugal, budget-friendly dish for your family on a weeknight, or you whip it up for your big Super Bowl party, even though the team you were rooting for is not in it, either way, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.